Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited for today's video because I'm gonna be showing you how to jump float serve and how to jump topspin serve. You guys have been asking for this for such a long time. I'm happy to be in the gym so I can run through the technique with you guys, show you how it's done, and just hopefully help you get a little bit better in the game, in your skill set, on your court. One thing I'll add is I'm gonna be teaching you a technique that I learned at USC that worked best for me. There's a lot of different ways you can be taught. You might have a coach that's told you to do the three step or hold your elbow like this. I'm not saying they're right or wrong, I'm just saying this is how I do it and if you are interested in how I do it or wanna learn that, I'm gonna show you that today. Also, everyone learns at different paces. So if you can't do what I'm doing today right away, don't get down on yourself, don't be upset with yourself. I wasn't jump float serving until I was, um, until I was, I think, in high school. In eighth grade, I was doing a standing top spin. So there's a bunch of different things you can do. And it's not about what kind of serve you're doing. Are you a jump top or a jump float or a standing float or an underhand? As long as you're putting a ball over the net that has some pace on it, that's moving and is gonna be hard to pass, that's the ball you should serve. So if your standing float is really good, no need to put pressure on yourself to mess with it. Once again, just want you guys to do what's best for you and I'm gonna walk you through that technique right now. Okay, we gotta go to the service line because that's where we serve the ball, Volleyball 101. So I'm gonna bring you guys back here and kind of show you where I stand how I do my steps and when I toss and all that good stuff. Okay, actually, new slash. Before you serve, you have to warm up your arm. Really important, you don't want to have any injuries, you don't want to be tearing any ligaments. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna warm up my arm against a wall. So in case you don't have a partner or someone to play with, this is how you would warm up your arm for those of you that don't know, but I'm hoping you all do. Some people, when they warm up their arms, they just like throw the ball and they get like lazy with it, but it's important that every move you make has intention. So when I'm warming up my arm, I'm going to be taking a swing that is the right movement I'd be taking in a game. And that looks like this. I'm here and I'm throwing. I'm extending and I'm throwing. Here, throwing. And so this is getting my body used to generating the uh, momentum from my right hip and my whole body. So it's not just my arm, I'm back, my weight's back, and then I'm coming through the ball. That's where you're gonna get a lot of your power. I'm here and I come through the ball. For lefties, it would look like this. You're here, you're coming. Oops, not that lefty. And you're here, you're through the ball. I like to warm up both my arms because it just makes me feel even. If I do one side for 30 minutes, I'm just like, my left side feels weak. My left side feels weak. So I do both. And then once you get that good rhythm and that good twist, you can start swinging. So it's the same thing. You're here. Oops. We're warming it up. <laughs> cool. Here. So if you guys notice, that should be very similar from toe, head to toe, but it's really important now that my toss is in front of me. I'm leading myself in front of my hitting arm to step through and swing. So I'm here, and I'm ending my weight forward. I hope that makes sense. My arm feels good. You can, you can try some on the left. I don't know how this will go. Yeah, not bad. And so then your arm should be feeling nice and ready. And once again, that's really important because that, those little things, that important warm up is gonna to transfer to your serve. So now in your serve, you're gonna have that same toss swing through and that rotate. So let's get to serving. So for a jump float serve, you're gonna take four steps. It's gonna be the same as when you're taking an approach at the net. Four steps, which stays consistent with how you hit at the net and also keeps that rhythm. You're going right, left, right, left. So oh, I'm so sorry if you're a lefty. I promise after I do the righty spiel, I'll try to do it on the left for you as well. So what you're gonna do is start. I start kind of, I don't know how many steps this is. One, two, three, four. I, I, I'm about four steps back. I don't count it out, I just kind of eyeball it. But my approach is gonna look like this. So I'm gonna start like this, and this looks like what? Exactly how I had myself positioned when I was swinging against the wall. And I'm gonna go right, left, 
right, left. I'll do that one more time. I'm here, my weight's back. Right, left, right, left. Cool. Oops, football, but no rap, we're good. And if you're a lefty, I'm gonna try. You'd be here, left, right, left. Not too bad. I'm like, maybe am I ambidextrous? I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people want to know when to toss, right? When do I toss the ball? I'm taking four steps, I'm thinking about the toss. When you're starting, you're gonna have to think about probably when you want to toss the ball, which is gonna be, um, let's see when I do it. I go right, left, toss, right, left. Right, left, toss, right, left. But I would encourage you to kind of, once you get the hang of that, just don't overthink it. Let your body just feel like, I'm, the, the, this is essentially, you're setting yourself up, then you're taking your, your right, left close to hit it. So feel it out and what's best for you, but it should be in between your first two and your second two. That brings me to the lift. So I've been using the word toss, that's kind of my bad, but I want you to think about lifting the ball. So you're, you're in the middle of your swing and you're gonna be lifting. My hand comes with it, I'm lifting the ball. Whereas this, is really hard to control. If I go like this, the ball is all over the place. Whereas if I lift it, I'm putting it right in my hitting sweet spot. So let's watch my approach for the lift. Right, left, right, left. All right, I'll do that one more time. Right, left, right, left. Cool. We're slowly getting there. We're going baby steps, people, because everything is important getting your serve down. And one more thing to think about with your approach is you want to be in a straight line. So if the camera's coming from behind me, and we're looking at this green line on the court, can you see this green line on the court? Yeah. Great. Um, I'm going to be going in a straight line. I'm right, left, right, left. I'm, okay, it's kind of straight, but I'm, I'm, I'm in this general path. I'm in a I'm imagining that I am, I have walls on each side of me and I'm in this straight line. That's really important because you don't want to be going like this and you don't want to be tossing and hitting it there. You want to be in one straight line. So now it's time to hit the ball, which is going to be very fun. One thing I tell a lot of the girls I coach is to hit it against, is to hit it against the ground a few times and feel that hard contact. You should really be hitting the ball with your whole hand. It's not your palm, it's not just your fingers, it's not this, it's not this. It's your whole hand, the same way you would give someone a high five. So you wanna hit that ball against the ground, really feel like you're getting that contact. And that's the same contact we're gonna get. So I'll go ahead and serve one. Long. First one of the day. <laughs> cool. Ace. So if you <laughs> so if you guys noticed, I took the same step, the same lift, and the same follow through that we've been talking about so far in this video. So now we're gonna film from behind me, and you're gonna be able to see hopefully that straight line where I'm starting, finishing, and following through is all pointing one way. Cool, so the ball went a little bit to the side, but my body and my technique, everything that was in my control was going straight. So I was serving straight down the court from what would be six to six. Now, the great thing about the technique I'm teaching you is it does not have to change. So if I now go to a cross court serve from either end, it's gonna be exactly the same. So if you come with me, this is actually, everyone has their favorite spots. My favorite spot to serve is back here. Um, you'll see I'm gonna go from this corner to that corner, and my technique is gonna look exactly the same as it did. If you watch my approach here, it's gonna be very similar to my approach on the corner of the court. Woo! Barely in. I'm approaching one way and I'm looking one way. Now, you might be thinking, Victoria, you're looking exactly where you're serving. Like, you're not going to throw anyone off. You're not pulling any tricks. It's going to be so obvious. My response to that would be, who cares? I remember thinking I had to look this way and serve that way and look here and do this. 
but that's really inconsistent. It's not great for your shoulder, and there's no big deal in letting them know where you're gonna serve. I prefer getting back to the line with my ball and being like, it's you girl, and then serving at her because I feel that good about my serve. So don't worry about being sneaky or being this and that. Just own your technique, own the direction you're serving, own the seam you're going for, the corner you're going for, approach to that part of the court, swing to that part of the court, and follow through to that part of the court. <laughs> and now I'm gonna do the same thing from this side of the court because the lighting's better, so you might be able to track the ball and see my stuff over here. So I'm in the corner, and I'm doing that corner to corner. Why am I so <laughs> when we're doing that corner to corner serve? Here we go. <laughs> I'm gonna include all the ones I've missed at the end of this video. <laughs> I'm surprised you guys have blue balls. So that toss was too close to my body. So my arm wasn't fully extended and I hit under the ball and that's why it soared. So on my next toss, I'm gonna be thinking about leading myself. I did wrong, I thought about it, I corrected it, and had a great serve. That is the way you want to be talking to yourself and communicating with yourself when you make a mistake. If I had made that first serve and said, oh, I suck, I just can't get this down, I don't think my second serve would have been as good as it just was. But my dialogue was, okay, my toss was a little too close, I'm going to adjust that, let me grab my next ball. So that's like the jump serve, right? I taught you how to jump serve. How do we get that great float on the ball? How do we get that ball to not spin? I'm gonna tell ya. So now I wanna really talk about how we're getting that content. How not content, content. How do we make the ball go like this and float? To do that, you need no spin on the ball. Any spin will take the ball in one direction. It's really hard for passers if they see the ball coming and then all of a sudden it moves. So to get that float serve, you wanna have a really clean contact on the ball that hits it so perfectly that it goes without spin and then going without spin causes gravity to, I think, I'm not a scientist, causes it. <laughs> Somehow, the ball will start floating. <laughs> well, let's get a closer look at that. I'm gonna show you guys this in just a standing float. It's really important to get the float part down. So if you have to start on your feet, do that, not a big deal. Start on your feet, get the float down, and then add the jump. Okay, there was some spin on that ball, so it didn't quite float. I'm working to it. A little better, a little better. So, <laughs> I can't do it standing. I think it's because I've done it jumping for so long. So I'm gonna try jumping and show you guys uh, the float. Oh, okay, that was a good one. Oh, okay, that was a good one. So if you guys saw that ball, it came straight and then really cut to the right because there was no spin. That's a lot harder to pass than a ball that is going exactly to one place. Oh, and you also have probably noticed that every time I go back to serve, I go like this. And then I serve. I go bounce, 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 spin, slap, get my game face on. That's my serving routine. I do that every time I serve. I don't know, I've just adapted it. It's really important that you guys develop a routine. So every time you go back to the service line, I want you to do the same thing. Whether that is hold the ball, look at the court, take a deep breath, bounce, and then begin your serving. Or if like me, you wanna hit it a few times, and then whatever it is, develop a routine and do it every time you serve. Do it in practice, do it in games, do it when you're just warming up, because that will help you stay consistent in your technique and stay in a rhythm. I don't even think about it anymore. Whenever they're like, serve, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Booyah. So develop a routine that is unique to you. You don't have to use, mine's not like a magical one. I just do it because it feels good for me. 
develop a routine and keep using that. It's super important. A lot of coaches will preach having a routine as well. We're about to move on from the jump float to the jump top spin, but just to review, when I'm doing a jump float serve, I'm gonna look and face exactly where I'm serving. I'm gonna have my weight back, my arm open. I'm going right, left, toss, right, left, lifting, swinging through the ball. Let's see, one more in action. Cool. So I hope you guys feel like this helped you a little bit. I hope your jump float feels like it's gonna get a little bit better when you practice this. Let's move to the jump top spin. Now I'm gonna be really honest about the jump top spin. Unless you're hitting it at above 50 miles an hour, you should be jump floating. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, but it, it looks so cool and it's so hard. Once you get to a competitive level, I'd say around 17s, 18s, and then especially college, a jump top spin is not effective unless you're serving it over 50 miles an hour. And the reason is because girls who are really good at defense and passing love a top spin. They love any down ball, they love something because it's going easy, you hold your platform, bam, it's an easy pass. If you told me I could have someone jump topping a good ball at me or floating, I would choose the jump top. It's just so much easier to pass. So I'm gonna teach you this skill in case you could develop it to be that speed. It might work when you're younger because girls aren't that uh, great with ball control to have a jump top spin that's like 30, 40 miles an hour. But when you get older, just to think about, you wanna be adding that power. I'm not a great jump top spin server. I'm not a great jump top spin server. But I know the technique and I know how to do it. So I'm gonna teach it to you guys in case it could be helpful to you. But please don't look at me like, this girl can't even jump top. Like, I know I can't jump top, but I'm just telling you guys how to do it in case you could be the girl that jump tops. So, oops. Okay. <laughs> So this is actually gonna be really easy. What you're gonna do is you can start with two feet. I like always starting with one foot backwards, but you're gonna give yourself a nice high spinning toss. It doesn't have to be spinning, but I prefer it uh, because then I know where my ball's going. I'm spinning my serve. And then from there, you're just going right, left, and getting up and taking a monster swing the same way you do with the net. So essentially with the jump top spin serve, you're just giving yourself a set. You're like, okay, I'm gonna spike it from back here. I'm gonna give myself a big toss and I'm gonna take four steps and rip into this ball. I don't hit it that hard if I wanna get it in the court. So uh, something that's really important about the jump top spin serve is your toss has to be in front of you. You want to be back and covering a lot of ground. You don't want to be tossing this on top of your head. You don't want to be tossing it behind you. You want to toss it and then have to jump and land inside the court. So it looks like this. Okay. That's a toss on top of my head. I feel like I need to stand like back here okay. to get your toss. I didn't even get your feet. This is difficult. <laughs> This is really weird. Okay, you saw that. It was a really high toss. I went right, left, right, left, and I got a high contact top spin snap. I'm sure it wasn't like the best top spin anyone's ever seen. I'm not a top spin server. Just showing you guys the techniques, you can try it. One thing that's important that I don't do well is going from slow to fast. So you wanna go right, left, right, left, and explode into that final conduct of your topspin serve. So I'm not even gonna try it again because <laughs> let's not, we don't wanna see that. But um, I hope this helps. And if you're trying to do a jump topspin serve, you might feel like you now have the technical guidance to begin training in. Lastly, some of you guys might not have a lot of space when you're serving. You might be thinking, Victoria, I don't have a runway to put in a great serve. I get it, that happens sometimes when we play our spring games, we don't have a lot of court, and the serves we practice all year long, we cannot even do, because we have to shorten everything. If that's the case, don't freak out, don't start telling yourself you're not gonna do a great job, you still can do a great job, you're just gonna have to adjust. So here's an example. If I was jump floating, back to the jump float, if I was jump floating and I didn't have a lot of room, what I would do is just kind of bring everything in to be like baby steps. So let's say I'm, I only have this much room, I might even just cut to my last two steps. 
So I'm here. I can't cut to my last two steps. I might just shrink down my forceps into a smaller uh, proportion forcep. So I'm here. I might even just step in place. And then hit that ball over. So not going to be my favorite serve. I wouldn't do that if I had the choice. But sometimes you don't. So just think about keeping that technique right and making sure that everything is technically sound. If you don't have a lot of space and you have to stay to, and you have to go to a standing float, just get everything in line, a nice toss, a nice contact. Anyways, I hope this, <laughs> so winded. Anyways, I hope that this video was helpful to you. I hope you learned something. I cannot wait to hear the feedback in the comment section if something helped you. I'm trying to think if there's any last comments I have about the serving. Oh, if your coach is correcting you or telling you something different than me, be open to that. I know you guys love my channel, but maybe your coach is really good and he or she is working with you and they say, oh, but you need to do something differently. Then listen to them, be open, try new things, see what works for you, and then uh, decide what you think fits the best. Another thing that's important is your serving is gonna progress. I was such a better server once I got my training and I started playing at USC than I was in club. And I was a better server in club than I was in middle school. So you're gonna keep growing and evolving. You have to stay positive about that. You might miss some, you might make some, but I would say start small, right? I wanna get, I wanna get my toss down. Then I wanna get my float down. Now I wanna add a jump. Now I wanna aim for in between them. Now I want to aim for the back left corner. It's a gradual process. It's not going to be amazing the first time. And it's only going to help you by having that positive outlook. Like, okay, I learned this today and I'm going to try that tomorrow. So I hope that this is all helpful to you guys and you can take something away from it. Good luck with your serving. I can't wait to hear how it goes. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Let me know what else you guys would love to see. And I'm going to go take a shower because I got way more workout than I was expecting. Hey guys, I'm here with Nicole Davis, two-time Olympian stud mentor. She's the best libero to ever live. I'll say that out loud. And I just recorded an hour podcast episode with her on my podcast, hashtag real pod. So if you want to listen to that, here's some volleyball wisdom from Nicole. Tune in. Tell them to tune in. She's the best. <laughs>